Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're looking at rotating shapes around a circle in Adobe Illustrator and we're going to do this two ways. We're going to do this so that the shapes are upright and we're going to do it so that the shapes are actually pointing towards the centre of the circle. So on the screen now you'll see the two options. So we're going to swing across here to a brand new document where I have a single shape. So I'm just going to bring the shape over to this point in the document. I'm going to make a duplicate of it. So I'm going to hold down the Alt or the Option key and just drag a duplicate away, making sure that these two are lined up. I'm using the Smart Guides to do that. But if you don't see them lined up or don't see the Smart Guides, just select over both shapes. And from the options up here on the control bar, you can just select Vertical Align Center. They're going to be perfectly aligned. So we're going to select over these two and we're going to make a blend out of them. So we're going to choose Object and then Blend and Make. Now that makes a blend. Your blend may not look exactly the same as mine. That does not matter. So what you're going to do with this still selected is come across here to the Blend tool and you're going to click on that and then double click on it to open up the Blend options. So what we've got here is Smooth Color. We're going to take it to Specified Steps and at this point you can increase or decrease the number of steps so that you can see more or less of your shape along your path. You're just going to click OK. Now we're going to make our circle, so we're going over here to these tools. We're going to choose the Ellipse tool. I'm going to hold down the Shift key as I drag out a nice circle. Now it doesn't matter what my circle looks like, whether it's got a stroke on it, a fill or anything like that, because all we're going to do is use the shape. Going back to the Selection tool, I'm going to select over my Blend and my Shape. So I've got both objects here selected. Then we're going back to the Object menu, down to the Blend collection of commands and we're going to replace spine because what that's going to do is it's going to place our shape along the spine and the spine is the outside path of this circle. So I'm just going to click here replace spine. So what we've got is our shape going sort of three quarters of the way around our circle. Not perfect but well on the way. The issue here is that when you've got a closed shape like this circle, it's never going to go all the way around. So we have to open up the shape. For this, we'll come across here to where the eraser tool is. Click on that and go and select the scissors tool. And with the scissors tool, we're just going to click somewhere to cut this path and it doesn't matter where you cut it. So I'm just clicking there to cut it. And you'll see that the result is that the shapes are now evenly spaced around my circle. So, so far for the standing upright version, Let's just make a duplicate of this entire blend. Blend shapes the whole thing. So I'm selecting over everything and Alt dragging a duplicate away. Now the secret to the rotation of these shapes is back in the Blend tool. So with this particular version of the shape selected, I'm going to again double click on the Blend tool. And this time the orientation is going to change. Right now we're aligned to the page. So each of these shapes is aligned relative to the page. But this option here is aligned to the path. So I'm going to click on it and click OK. And now you'll see that instantly the shape is now pointing into the center of the circle. It's rotating around the path and it's oriented according to its position on the path. Now before we leave this tool, I want to show you what you're going to do if you want these to point the other way. So point outside if you like. We're selecting over this shape, we're going to the Layers panel. You can get to that by choosing Window and then Layers. We're going to open up our layer here. Let me just get everything else out of the way. This top one is the one that we're looking at here. So I'm just going to open up this Disclosure Triangle. Now for this we're going to have a path and then we're going to have a start shape and an end shape. Here's our path, here's our start shape, here's our end shape. But our start and end shapes are in exactly the same position. Let's see, I'm clicking on that one here and now I'm clicking on it again and you'll see that it's exactly the same shape. So we're going to click to select both of them. So I'm going to click one and then shift click on the second one. So I've got both these shapes selected. Now I can simply rotate them. And if I want them to point the exact opposite direction, I'm going to rotate them holding the shift key and I'm going to rotate them so that they're all pointing outwards. Let go of the mouse and we're ready to go. 
So you'll need to locate the beginning and end shapes and they're going to be in the layers palette, they're going to be in that collection and provided you change the beginning and end to the same rotation, then the whole of the rest of the shape in this blend is going to do the same thing. Now we could do the same thing here, it's just that they're going to be rotated relative to the page because that's what our blend is. Let me just close up this blend that we've just edited. Let's open up this blend which we haven't edited. Let's click on our start shape, shift click on our end shape and whatever we do with this shape is just going to be reflected around the entire blend. And again this blends orientation is relative to the page so all of these shapes are going to point in the exact same direction. This one is relative to the path and so the shapes are going to rotate around the path. So I hope that helps you understand how you can get different effects with your blends in Adobe Illustrator. Of course it's really important to remember that you're going to need to cut your path if you want your shapes to go all the way around the path. That's sort of like a handy tip that I've included here in this video for you. And before I finish up, a big thank you to one of my subscribers, MGM Clow 4572 who asked the question which prompted me to make this video. If you like carefully researched content like this clearly presented in a step-by-step -step format so that you can get great results, then you'll love my Skillshare content. I'm a Skillshare top teacher. I have hundreds of short courses on Skillshare that you can access along with thousands of other great courses, all for the price of a single subscription. If you're interested, there's a Skillshare coupon for you in the description below to use to sign up. Using this coupon benefits me as a creator and it helps me continue to make free content available here for you also on YouTube. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. On the screen now you'll see a video that I've handpicked for you. If you enjoyed the video you've just watched, I know that you're going to really enjoy the one I've picked for you to watch next.